What's going on, guys? Uh, shit. I guarantee my headphones are still on. Let's go ahead. What's going on, guys? And uh, happy Saturday, the 29th. Welcome to uh, episode 29. Um, again, it's going to go fast, guys. It's kind of wild to think that that's like <laughs> 29 of these so far this year. But that's big stuff. So, um, let's talk about risk management and faith, all right? Um, the reality is uh, nobody ever did anything without some risk. There's a little bit of risk to anything that you ever want to do, um, and there's a lot of risk to a lot of things you want to do. And that old you know, concept, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained, you know, with great risk comes great reward. Those things are really true. Um, and I think that a lot of this has to do with your ability to tolerate risk loss, failure, and then learn from those things. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Um, can y'all hear me? <laughs> um, I exchanged books uh, with one of my clients, Austin, the other day. It's actually uh, one of my artists, James's brother. I'm pretty excited about it. This uh, seems like a really cool book. I asked him if he knew about Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. And he's like, I've read that like 21 times. I was like, my dude, did we just become best friends? We just became best friends. Hell yeah. So we exchanged some books. I gave him a copy of my Jocko Willink book. Um, it's a uh, uh, Leadership Strategies. Um, great book. I'm not even all the way finished with it, but it's been a great book so far. But, uh, you know, it's just one of those opportunities. I'd love to swap something. But he gave me this book that's super careworn. Um, it's obviously been read a lot of times. And I love that. Um, and uh, today I was just like, man, I'm going to just open to a random page. And the first thing that jumps out at me, we're going to talk about that. Which is cool because literally I've been talking about this with Lacey a lot lately. We talked a lot about it last night. In fact, like a long conversation. It was really awesome and I'm super happy we did it. But uh, this book is called uh, An Enemy Called Average by John L. Mason. Um... First thing when I opened it up was uh, those who don't make chance, don't take chances, don't make advances. All right. So let's, I just read the first line here and I was like, holy crap. <laughs> holy crap. What's up, Lacey? You're going to like this because this is like, this ties literally exactly into what we were talking about last night. And this is one of my favorite things sometimes about our talks is that like we get these like cool follow ups afterwards. But all great discoveries have been made by people whose faith ran ahead of their minds. Significant achievements have not been obtained by taking small risk or unimp on unimportant issues. Don't ever waste time planning, analyzing, or risking on small ideas. It's always wise to spend more time on decisions that are irreversible and less time on decisions that are reversible. Um, well, <laughs> there's a lot in the, just that one paragraph, but let's unpack a little bit of it here and let's talk about it, okay? First off... Um, I really love that because here's the thing is that like, although I lived a life where I took a lot of really stupid risks when I was younger, what I didn't do was take some really amazing risks. And some of those just basic amazing risks was just believing in myself above all other things, using that faith applied concept. There's a difference between just faith and faith applied. Faith is belief. In my opinion, faith applied is an unshakable belief that what you are looking to accomplish will come to fruition because you will continue to attack it until it works. Essentially, what I'd like to define it as is faith apl applied is just being relentless. Okay? Relentless. It's tattooed on my chin. All right, what's up, Mike? What's up, honey? Uh, and um, somebody else said what's up, too. Okay, man, not yet. I'm sure that uh, <laughs> Stanley will be in here in a little bit minute, too, here. So, But here's the thing, guys. Like, we all have this tendency to want to play it safe. If you really look at, like, a lot, especially, like, financially, this is a really big thing, man, because we're always like, oh, I don't want to lose all of my investment. I don't want to lose all of my time. I don't want to lose all the energy and money and everything else that I put into this, this future. Um, but, but... There's inherent risk involved in anything, and usually the greater the risk, the greater the reward. But this is why it's important for you to educate yourself. 
This is why it's important for you to not necessarily, for example, risk everything you own on a really poor chance. But I've been doing like a lot of research. I've been talking to a lot of people who actually make literally boatloads of money. Okay. And so we're, this is, we're going to talk a little bit about money here today on this, but it's, a, it's always a great way you can apply it to any other aspect of your life. Okay. But I've been talking to a lot of people that make boatloads of money lately. And I've been studying a lot of people and, and listening to videos and content and paying attention to the way people who are wildly financially successful manage their money. <laughs> That's awesome, Aaron. Um, and so one of the things is, is that you'll find that people who are highly financially successful do take risks and they often take losses too. But the reality is, is that the more you take risks, the more you learn. When you play everything safe, when you play everything safe, you fail on principle because there's no such thing as safety. Literally. Let me get that across to you. Life isn't fucking safe. There's no such thing as a sure fucking bet. There's always factors that can mess with your concept. And let's say you think you got a surefire bet and you put all in and then it clobbers you. Well, you can lose no matter how safe you think you're playing it. That's, that's the reality of it. And in fact, a lot of people lost when we had that 2008 financial crisis. People had their 401ks, their houses, everything else you could imagine, their retirement funds, just boom, boom. Boom, just disintegrated. People's whole futures that they thought were very, very sure disintegrated. But during that same time, during that same time, tons of people drugged themselves up from the ground that were already there or had fallen down and made twice what they had beforehand. A lot of people discovered that truly when there is a crisis, opportunities are abound. Okay, and we live in a opportunity rich, opportunity laden environment, the, the likes of which has never existed in humankind. And that, that goes for financial, that goes for spiritual, that goes for anything you can imagine. Really, when it basically comes down to it, anything you could ever possibly want to do, there's a blueprint out here and you can follow it. And again, just because there's a blueprint doesn't mean that it's foolproof, but it does help you hedge your bets. So one thing I think that anybody here, and you know, I want to talk a little bit more about this because it's something I really enjoy like listening to and, and discussing and stuff. And so even if I'm just discussing it with myself, I'd love to have some more talks about this kind of stuff. So if y'all have questions, shoot them here in the chat, shoot them here in like messenger or whatever. And I'll try to talk about it a little bit more, but I want to talk about like financial planning and financial success and what that means in relation to risks in our lives and how we risk our money. Because here's one of the things I do want to tell you. You cannot understate how important, how important it is to make learning experiences out of anything that ever happens to you financially. Don't take advice from people who aren't doing stuff that you'd want to do. Personally, and I'm not shitting on people that have one, so let me get that straight. But personally, the idea of getting a 401k and living off a 401k until I die doesn't sound appealing to me whatsoever. Not even a little bit. So the idea of talking to most financial advisors or planners who are going to help me find make a retirement fund and get myself a comfortable concept for when I get older and try to hedge these bets just don't make sense to me. Now, if that's something that you want, that makes sense. That's fine. But what I do know, what I do know is I've learned a lot about the way money works from people who have a lot of money. And those people, like I said, they lose money, they gain money, but they learn in the process. And some of the people I know who are doing the best have lost big several times. I've personally lost everything I've ever owned at least three or four times, at least, at very least. And I'm in a position now where I've got more to lose than I've ever had in my whole life, but I'm starting to recognize what types of things are important to take risks on, what types of things it's important to put my faith into and apply. And for example, rather than trying to hedge my bets on a retirement fund or trying to save up so I can live off of something that I've been saving up all that time, what I'm going to do is create multiple streams of passive income. All right. If nobody's talked to you about this before, let me really make sure you understand this. Multiple streams of passive income. 
That means money you don't have to do work for, where you've made an investment of some kind, and you get the payoff. Now, most people, me and Lacey were talking about this last night. Again, this is a really powerful fucking moment for me. I wish I could have expressed it to you more last night, honey. But, like, I'm going to now. I got so carried away. I was so excited. Just had a ton of different emotions going on. But, really, we made, like, this agreement that, like, you know, what, we'll worry about buying a house when we know for sure that we're going to be able to buy the very perfect fucking house that we want. And if that takes four or five years, fucking whatever. All right? But in the meantime... I'm going to get my credit on fire and I'm going to start looking at purchasing houses not to live in, maybe to run an Airbnb out of it, maybe to rent out. And see, those are examples that you're taking a risk because you're still, the mortgage is still in your name, but you're having other people pay that mortgage, well, maybe plus a little bit, you know, because of the conveniences essentially, <laughs> and you're taking the risk. And even though you're not necessarily directly making money, you're building equity and credit, all right? So you see now <coughs> how you can use that equity and credit to get another house, for example, and then get another one, and then get another one. And eventually, you'll get to a point where you have enough streams of income just from your, your real estate holdings that you're starting to actually make a reasonable quantity of money off of it. I know a couple of dudes, I got a homie that I tattooed here the other day who makes, he, I think he said close to like 120K just off of like three or four Airbnbs that he owns, all right? Decent amount of work, but you, you keep that same concept going and eventually you can have other people manage that, all right? And that goes for so many different things. There's so many different ways. Like I just, I couldn't break them all down here. All of them are gonna take energy, time, risk. But what I want you to understand is that your ability to power through the risk through the failures is directly proportionate to the level of faith you have in you and God. I believe that your ability to understand that God will pull you through anything and everything that ever fucking happens so that you can continue to thrive because God wants you to thrive is what will cause you to thrive. All right? So that means that when you hit a wall, you just climb the fuck over that thing and you keep going. So many people start stuff and then quit because they get scared. They have one financial scare and they're like, oh, I gotta play it safe for the rest of my life. Why? Why? You only get to live one time, man. One time. And you're gonna try to play it safe the whole time you do it. I would rather put my heart and my faith in the right place and understand that if I push forward hard enough that no matter what, I can make it happen because I believe in me and my creator and sit around and try to play it safe. Risk management and risk taking literally without fail are like the backbone of success. All right. Nobody that's successful has ever gotten successful without massive failures and nobody that's successful has ever gotten successful without faith that they would make it through those failures. Behind every successful person, you know what I see? A fucking wreckage behind them that they have climbed over to get through to where they're at. And so many people just think that they just had it handed to them. <laughs> well, we talked the other day when I was tattooing Austin still, and you know, there's a great phrase I love that I've heard it before, but it's like, you know, I'm going to drive, it's like the concept is like somebody says, well, I'm going to drive a Porsche, my kid's going to drive a Lambo, but then your grandkid's going to fucking walk to work. Okay. That means that we can't be given things and have it work. We have to earn them to appreciate them. Simply put, that is just as simple, that is as simple as it gets. You have to earn it. It matters to you to take the right kind of risks because you've taken the wrong kinds of risks. It matters to you to have faith in things because you know what it looked like to not have faith in the past. So, I say to you again, place your faith in your fucking creator and in the heart and soul and energy and passion that that creator gave you. Approach everything with love. The failure is a fucking learning experience. It's not failure until you accept it as failure. The failure is actually just a learning experience. So if you look at that as like each time you've had a setback, it's just another rung on the ladder that sometimes, sometimes the championship fighter has to take a step back and maybe take a few body shots so that they can come in and hit you with the right hook and knock you out. Sometimes you got to take a few hits to be able to come back with a haymaker. All right, but that doesn't happen 
if you try to play it safe all the time. All I'm really saying here is that you could knock me down, really. You could take everything I have right now, including my tattoo machines, and I'd have nothing but the clothes on my back, and I think anybody that knows me could honestly say I'd be in the same position I am right now within a year. No questions asked. Maybe less because now I have the blueprint so fucking thoroughly down because I have faith in my abilities and a willingness to act it out despite how frustrating it might have been. I love all of you. So let's try something new today. Let's look at our past failures and pick them back up. We're going to pick them back up and we're going to say, these were learning experiences. What can I learn from it? And then we're going to attack the same shit that we thought we failed before. But we're going to do it with that knowledge. Faith applied. Love y'all. Talk to you tomorrow.